Hey, it's some old guy coding again here today, and, and we're going to take a look at uh, continuing to work on that uh, uh, low writer project. This will be the second episode. I've already printed the, or rather, <laughs> I've already cut out the wooden parts in the previous episode. So now let's take a little look at the plans here of what I'm going to be doing. Um, here we are at the home page of uh, V1 Engineering, and uh, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, the Lowrider project. I really like how uh, uh, he's got this set up with the Lowrider parts. So we can take a look at that page here, and uh, we can go through and look at all of these parts that uh, uh, are needed. And some of these come with the the hardware kit, including this stuff here, and uh, and some of the electronics. Um, Here's the cut parts that we did last time, <clears throat> and these parts come with the hardware uh, hardware kit. So we'll be ordering one of those here eventually, as soon as I can uh, round up that uh, the money to do so. Currently printing the parts that's in progress, and we'll be taking a look at that a little bit later, off of uh, Thingiverse here. So let's go ahead and take a look at the second step in this little writer assembly. This is a great uh, organization on this project here. Uh, right here is a look at the big 4x8 sheet um, um, lowrider here. Nice glossy finish on there. But uh, what we're going to look at first here is uh, first we have to figure out how big we're going to make this thing. And we have this wonderful calculator in both inches and millimeters. And of course being I'm in the silly United States that still use inches. We're going to go with that one. Now, what I want to be able to do is uh, um, I'd love to make a full, uh, you know, 4x8 uh, lowrider, but <clears throat> I just don't have the room. I do want to be able to just slap a piece of 4x2x4 uh, by by foot uh, sheet of plywood in there to build something with, you know, something a little bit uh, more usable that I wouldn't have to cut down all the time. So I want the X um, width, and that's the one that's going to be writing on the uh, uh, stainless steel bars or tubes. I want to make that usable space two, uh, two feet wide, and I want to make the Y usable space four feet long. So that's going to be 48 inches. And uh, the Z usable height, I'm going to, you know, go go with that. That's that's fine. Maybe we can get a little more out of it. Maybe not. But if we push the button now, or maybe we don't even have to push the button, it already tells us that we need two uh, uh, stainless steel rails that are 36 and uh, just about a half inch long. Well, I went out to Amazon and I ordered some, some parts here, and uh, without uh, trying to keep the cost down, I ordered two three-foot um, stainless steel ra rails, so they're only 36 inches long. I'm, so, I'm hoping somewhere along the process that maybe I can squeeze that extra um, quarter inch on each side to be able to get that little extra space. So we'll see what happens there. Uh, if not, it's not, you know, we'll just deal with it. But uh, I'm hoping to be able to do that. So we'll see. And then um, the Z rails are 11.28. So that's just under a foot. And out on Amazon, I, I found uh, uh, the appropriate size stainless steel in 12 inch lengths. So that's what I ordered for the 12 inch um, um, stainless steel uh, tubes. That way I don't have to do any cutting. The belt will come with the, the kit that I order from Ryan, is my understanding, or, or we can add it on, or the total, rather. And the uh, lead screws come with the, with the kit, too. So, there we have it. Um, the rails are on order, and uh, we'll, we'll do uh, the rest of the parts here <laughs> soon, I hope. So let's go back here to this page. And we can go ahead and look at assembly then, continue on with assembly. No, I don't want to close that tab, thank you. Alright, so let's take a look at the first thing. 
here's a nice picture of the center assembly and we'll go ahead and start out with assembling the center assembly but as I say I don't have the hardware so uh, let me show you where I'm at Ta -da! here we are in Fusion 360 and I've got all the wood parts cut out I've got uh, 3d printed parts uh, um, in in the system here now these are uh, you know downloaded from Thingiverse but then greatly reduced in uh, in face count just because uh, to keep the you know things a little lighter on the processor so they're not exact uh, copies or anything they're just uh, close but they'll be good enough for our sample here and here's a bunch of the stuff that comes in the hardware kit including the stepper motors little pulleys uh, the wheels aren't quite the style I don't think that uh, will be coming in the kit but uh, these are things that I could find out on Thingiverse and we'll talk about that in a minute uh, some of these parts are from Thingiverse, um, particularly up here. Um, the rest of these hardware parts are off of uh, McMaster Car, uh, including the bearings, um, which I downloaded off of there. I did remove the inside balls. I don't know if that would help decrease the processor, uh, the inside bearing balls. I wasn't sure if that would decrease the uh, processor in intensity or not. Um, but... <coughs> So first, let me go over and give credit where credit is due for some of these parts here. Um, one more thing I think I'd like to say is um, when I started out putting all these parts in here, I had everything as bodies up under the up under the the main assembly up here, just all bodies, and you know <laughs> the performance really really went down. It was tough to get anything done, move it around. Uh, copy it. So I did a little research and uh, I learned that I really should be using components. So now each one of these things is a component so that we'll be able to apply joints to it and that sort of thing during assembly. And that's going to go a lot more smoothly, I think, than, uh, than before. So let me stop here and uh, we'll uh, uh, I call compile the list of um, uh, Thingiverse um, entries in here. And we'll take a look at it again. Oh, one other thing too is uh, I couldn't find a, 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 a copy of uh, the lead screw. Um, I couldn't find a model of that, I should say. So these are just cylinders uh, representing the, the lead screws at the uh, 300 uh, millimeter length that they come in the kit. <coughs> and of course over here is our, our wonderful stainless. Um, <coughs> I like to turn these into a little bit lighter blue to match the material I'm using, but uh, I need to find where to do that in here. I know it's possible. I just, I've done it once before. Yes, I need to dig for it. And I don't know that the wheels will be yellow. <laughs> so, who knows? So you probably have the question in your mind that uh, why am I going to all this trouble to make a, a model and assemble it and, and all that stuff when I could just do it with the real thing? Well, there's two reasons. One... I don't have any room to build this thing yet, and I don't have the parts to build it yet. And the uh, second reason is is that I'd like to start designing the case for this thing. Yes, it's going to have to be inside a case in order to live inside my house here, and, and it's going to be in my office, and uh, it's got to have a case on it. So this is more complex than uh, mostly printed CNC machine. Uh, I think it's going to be more complex to build a case for it. Maybe maybe uh, it, it isn't that bad once I get to it, but we'll see. So, so I'm going to be doing assembly uh, in Fusion 360. And my question is to you guys, uh, do you want um, me to go through everything step by step in Fusion as I assemble it, as I would in a real thing? Uh, do you want me to make... Uh, or do you want me to just make assemblies and show them to you? Or do you want me to just put the whole thing together and be done with it? And uh, ta-da! So you let me know and uh, just comment below. So here we go. I'm going to go uh, uh, um, find these parts in here and the Thingiverse files and we'll do some credits. So.